to give a bit of background before we go on. In, in the Washington Post, Amber wrote an opinion piece, and off the back of that, Johnny Depp is suing her for defamation Depp. of character. So what has come out uh, recently is a uh, motion from Amber Heard's legal team. It's a motion to dismiss this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in that she made like a long, there's like 292 page documents. I, I have some details that I am aware of and I had certainly have opinions on these details. You're a bit more versed in this new motion mm -hmm. that's come out. And the document, the mentioned document is available online. The, the link for this document will be included in the description. Mm -hmm. We would not blindly defend somebody who we thought would do disgusting crimes. That sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> I've had so many people saying to me, oh, you know, you're an abuse sympathizer. The same, you know, same response. And don't you find that it's insulting? It's insulting to my intelligence, insulting to your intelligence. Many people who support Johnny Depp have been victims of abuse themselves, so yep. I think that's why they feel so passionate about it. When you say Noswell first, also it's because it's an ongoing case. We, and we would say there are many really, really amazing um, fan accounts on YouTube, on Twitter. Um, not least, I would recommend anybody watch um, their videos, Autumn on Venus. Mm -hmm. And that Brian fellow, that's his name on Twitter, and his YouTube channel, I believe, is it's called Incredibly Average. But they have both made incredibly <laughs> detailed, um, very detailed, <clears throat> yeah, um, extensive research of the case, very informative videos. We don't want to say anything that might hurt the case, so that's another reason why we don't want to go too deeply into detail. But we thought we'd just point out um, some things that jumped out of us on our thoughts on the matter. Yeah, so I suppose first and foremost, and it's one that's probably may seem a bit obscure at the start, but uh, when we kind of delved into it, mm -hmm. it was definitely <laughs> interesting to say the least. Uh, he's a person who's been mentioned. Yeah. Um, enter Dr. Kipper. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Dr. Dr. Nick. Nick. Well, Amber Heard in this uh, motion uh, alleges that uh, Dr. David Kipper was treating Johnny for addiction problems. Now, I will I will put emphasis on the word alleged because we have doubts over this and we have questions over this. And we also have questions over David Kipper himself. For, to begin with, he has quite the history and this is all well documented. You can look this up. There are articles out there going as far back as 1998 in which he was found to have been operating out of unlicensed premises, namely hotel rooms, a major one being the Peninsula Hotel, which was located just beside his own offices to the point where the California state got in contact with both him and the Peninsula Hotel, stating that he's no longer to be operating out of these unlicensed premises. There is also an LA Times piece which uh, discusses uh, an anonymous uh, rock star who was being treat who was being treated by Dr. Kipper for heroin addiction in the Peninsula Hotel. This same rock star was also spotted in the hotel bar later that day, having Jack Daniels. <clears throat> so fast forward a few years, two thousand and three, two thousand and four. It came out that uh, Dr. David uh, Kipper was uh, accused by Ozzy Osbourne for over medicating him which um, Ozzy believed contributed to his behavior on the Osborne's TV show now again we should probably take that with a pinch of salt because it was a reality TV show mm -hmm. and to play devil's advocate stuff like that's always kind of played up for the cameras and edited in a certain way to present a character or a person in that show in a certain way however there is more weight to this because during this time it also came out that um, Dr. David Kipper's medical license was on the verge of being revoked. So I just, there are a lot of questions raised yeah. about uh, this Dr. David Kipper person. And to make things even more interesting, in December 13th, 2014, Johnny Depp was pictured at Dr. David Kipper's Christmas party. And you could see Amber Heard in the background, the back of her head. Now this can be verified because an Instagram post was made by an account which at the time was called Grace Jones Wilder Twin. And it was 
mentioned in the caption that it was at David Kipper's Christmas party. And under the comments, you can she was asked, was Amber Heard there? To which Crystal Baylor responded, yes, of course she was there. Uh, a Johnny Depp fan account had posted this original Instagram picture. To try and verify it, we decided to look it up. Uh, that username, Grace Jones Wilder Twin, no longer exists. However, the hashtag she used, which was hashtag Grace Jones Wilder Twin, was still available to search in Instagram, which enabled us to find her account, which is now operating under the name of Chris underscore Baylor. Even more interesting, the photo is still there. The caption no longer mentions Dr. David Kipper. His name has just magically disappeared from the description. A lot of questions off the back of this. One, why would she remove David Kipper's name? Two, if, and this is one of the reasons we don't believe that he was being treated for addiction problems at this time, this and another that we'll discuss later on. If he was being treated for addiction problems by Dr. David Kipper, then why on earth would Dr. Kipper invite his patient to his Christmas party where there would more than likely be alcohol being served? Oh yeah, or as a victim trying to get your husband help because he's so abusive and so drunk when he's under the influence of drugs. Why would you go, yeah, let's go on over to the quack doctor's Christmas party and have booze there and, you know, there's going to be more, possibly more drugs, more drink. Like, that's just completely, yeah, it doesn't really sit well with the whole kind of young martyr image that she's trying to put herself off across as. To make things even more interesting, four days later, on December 17th, 2014, <laughs> Johnny was alleged to have had a particularly violent episode after which he apologized calling himself a quote effing savage. Of course when we fast forward by one year on December 15th was the one of the more uh, famous or well-known allegations attacks, yeah. of attacks uh, which took place the day before the James Corden show which Amber details in the court documents. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, so this is part of her declaration. I'll just read some of it out. Um, <clears throat> it says Johnny picked a fight with her in their penthouse. Um, he threw another decanter at me. He likes his decanters, apparently. Knocks items around the room, punched the wall. He slapped me hard, grabbed me by my hair, and dragged me <clears throat> from a stairwell to the office, to the living room, to the kitchen, to the bedroom, and then to the guest room. So that's a lot of, like, uh, that's impressive that she remembers. I mean, usually when you're being that badly attacked, it would be all just a blur of complete panic and trying to get away from this person. Uh, hoping to avoid the violence, tried to calm down. Um, he followed me upstairs, hit me in the back of the head, grabbed my hair again, and got in front of the steps and dragged me by the hair up the last few steps. A lot of things about this declaration is it's very, very detailed, but like I said, overuse of detail is not a sign of truthfulness, nine times out of ten. Um, it's usually, I mean, it's definitely, it's very shocking, and I think she's done that on purpose to kind of make it sound very, very shocking, to make it more believable, because a little bit like recently, like our previous do um, videos on like the Leaving Neverland documentary, for instance, we mentioned how these guys go into real horrible graphic detail. It's very harrowing to hear, but when you actually get over that initial shock and look closely at what's being said, you then say, right, actually, hang on a second. It doesn't actually make sense. There's a lot of questionable things being said here. Uh, yeah, she said he would, um, he was screaming, I'll fucking kill you, I'll kill you, do you hear me? Oh, you think you're a tough guy? Uh, so once again, he's, giving some sort of audio description, running commentary. That night I text my publicist, Jody. I'm going to completely bastardize her surname, Gottlieb, who lives in Los Angeles, let her know I've been badly injured, may not be able to make an appearance on the Late Late Show that was scheduled for the following day to the extent of my bruising. She basically told her an accident. Oh yeah, um, like many of those experienced abuse, I was afraid to uh, expose this aspect of my relationship. Then a day or two later she went to her old friend Dr. Kipper's office to get a checkup uh, for a concussion checkup follow-up examination 
So that's interesting. So yeah, she said that the nurse who saw her followed her out to the parking lot and told her that she recognised that she was in trouble. So once again, she remembers all this really detailed information, yet she fails to give the doctor's reports on the concussion. Well, there's a few things here. I mean, one, as established, it's kind of hard to take Dr. Kipper as a credible source or Mm. even those who work for him. Secondly, if she did suffer a concussion, then how was she able to accurately remember every precise detail of Mm. the events leading up to the concussion? Um, thirdly, on the James Corden show, the day after she reportedly suffered a concussion, she didn't appear glassy-eyed, she didn't appear like she was uh, suffering from any memory loss or any no. other ill effects. I mean, you, people know a lot more these days about the effects of concussions than we did maybe 10 or so years ago. I mean, you only have to look at the NFL and such. I mean the the effects of a concussion can stay with you for the rest of your life to the point where like you f- you forget things your vision gets affected especially like immediately following a concussion you can become violently ill and be, be you know to not to be Sweet. vulgar but you throw up all over the place uh so it's she wasn't really like it's it's very it just doesn't again it just doesn't add up like if someone suffers a concussion like you, you can look up any like athlete's uh, description of suffering from concussion. It's going to be, oh, well, I can't remember anything leading up to it. Or I, I went out to the field or I went out to the boxing ring and then I just remember nothing. Yet mm-hmm. she was able to describe every particular room she was dragged to. She can describe everything that was said to her and that what she said, every act. And then believes us. Oh, I probably had a concussion. It's just that 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 doesn't gel. It those they don't yeah. they don't add up. Like, I mean, people yeah. people know too much about concussions these days now. People who have suffered concussions tend to not remember any of that stuff. And as well, like she's saying, her blip was busted. All these injuries that she'd suffered on that alleged attack, like you wouldn't remember a lot of that. Usually, like your body goes into shock. So you're not going to remember specifics about what room you got dragged into and when and how exactly many stairs that he grabbed you, mm. you know, what point in the flight of stairs he grab you or push you or shove you. You're not going to remember that. Like, I mean, you would almost have trouble even remembering what the fight was about. Yeah, exactly. And as you mentioned, if it wasn't the concussion, then surely like the, the blur of panic, mm-hmm. you're, you're not going to be able to like kind of look around you and take note of all the details while this is happening to you all you're going to be aware of is a man punching you in the face like it's hard to see what room in your what room you're in when you're being punched in the eye yeah exactly and head butted in the face and everything i mean like if a guy like okay like johnny's not that tall but he's still taller than amber and he's mm-hmm. he's quite you know okay he's you know a muscular guy or whatever but being head butted in the face by anybody Hurts. yeah this like but, the head this is the hardest part of your body if you hit somebody with that mm-hmm. you know they're going to be dazed it could she could have even been knocked out yeah i'd say i'd say most it's a, likely it's out. it's yeah. like that's a possibility as well again if we're assuming that these allegations are true assuming being the operative word um it just it just doesn't add up how she was able to withstand this and the effects that such a brief uh, such a beating would would incur and still have the wherewithal to remember every single detail yeah it just does not make sense and that brings me to another question we and this was actually brought up by a another twitter user so um we're not going to claim like anything we bring forward here like we're not claiming credit mm. with what we discovered this all by ourselves we didn't it's all out there it's public you can look for it and we'll link as many sources as we can but it's well known that johnny depp wears a lot of jewelry mm-hmm. namely a lot of rings on his fingers mm-hmm. so if he was going to as amber alleges punch her like he's either going to punch her with a bunch of rings in his hand essentially be may as well be wearing a pair of brass knuckles yeah then surely that does that really tie in with like the pictures that she releases of a few bruises here and there i mean now she'd yeah. be cut up she'd be busted up like she'd be really bad almost mutilated i mean she said that you know what he punched her he grabbed her by the throat he pulled clumps of hair out he dragged her from one end of the house so like into the kitchen into the living room back to the kitchen up the stairs into the bedroom into the bathroom back into the bedroom down the stairs again you know and this is the way she's describing it well not maybe literally like that but she's describing you know, he basically beat her black and blue and dragged her all over the house yet she like these photographs she supplies with like the metadata um 
she says it happened that was as a result of that. But you would be much more beaten up, like, unless he decided, okay, like, yeah, I'm so angry at you, I'm gonna beat you up, just let me take these rings off. One, two, <laughs> three. You know, by the time he gets to, like, all of his, I don't know, takes all his, and there's a jewellery as well. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if she was, um, if you're being beaten by somebody who's wearing a load of necklaces and earrings, so she could have easily grabbed him and used one of those necklaces to strangle him in self-defence or pull one of those earrings out. So he often wears earrings as well. No matter how much makeup she said she put on to the James Corden show, you would not... Like, it would have to be kiss levels of makeup. You would still have swelling on your cheek. Like, she mm-hmm. has, like, her makeup, I must say, is, like, lovely and that, you know, nice foundation, red lipstick, whatever. It, that would still be swelling if she was that badly bruised from this crazy attack. Yeah, and just a, a lot of these, like, descriptions of atta- of alleged attacks, again, we just can't overemphasize alleged. Oh, we have to be just... We, we just want to clarify that you know we're being very careful what mm-hmm. we say here um but again a common thread is that a lot of these uh, attacks or descriptions of alleged attacks they just they seem quite fantastical they seem quite um i don't know uh, unbelievable to a certain extent another one took place um, on an airplane so there's the airplane incidents they both been filming um Amber somehow got, got herself to Boston from where she was filming, met Johnny there. They decided to fly back to LA. And she says that Johnny was angry at her because she'd filmed a romantic scene the day before with James Franco. Um, so that's a bit weird. Like a guy, you know, he's been in the film business way longer than she has. You know, I'd say he probably understands that's how the whole thing works. You know, romantic scenes, actors, you might have to pretend to kiss somebody who's not your husband occasionally. So like that in itself seems a bit ludicrous to me that he's angry at her for basically doing her job and then he's drinking, holding a bottle of champagne and yeah, thrashing things. And she goes on to say that um, he kicked her, pushed her over, yelled obscenities at her, was very drunk. And then, like, I don't even know how I missed this the first time I read it. It was only on Twitter. I saw somebody saying and I was like, well, what? Are you sure this is real? And, uh, yeah, he pushed an airplane chair at her. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I, yeah, how is that possible? So, again, we, um, we, we went back and we read through, as you mentioned, the actual <laughs> statement. So, uh, she met Amber alleges that Johnny Depp pushed an airplane chair towards her in a provocative manner. Now, that would suggest that she was walking down the aisle as that happened and he pushed an airplane chair towards her. Now, I don't know how that's possible. Chairs in any aircraft have to be fixed down for obvious bloody reasons, you Mm. know, for safety and all that. And they can only move either backwards or forwards at the passenger's discretion. She seems to expect us to believe that he was had the strength to pull to push an airplane chair in fr- in her in front of her Sorry. as she's walking down the aisle. So to the side, as if he's the Incredible Hulk, all of a sudden. Don't be silly, Kevin. That absolutely not what happened. He would have cut his toolbox. Of course. It's really even down there, right? Passing the screwdriver. Yep. Wench. Yep. Check. Right. Just wait there a second, Amber. Just right. Yep. Yeah. Why do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so why do all these allegations of uh, attacks involve Amber having to stand around patiently while Johnny prepares himself? <laughs> all screws the airplane furniture, takes all his rings off so he can, you know, punch her out with minimum damage. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so it's either that or she expects so. us to believe that uh, airplane chairs are I- able to withstand turbulence and plane crashes, but not Johnny Depp. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just... I shouldn't be laughing because it's horrible, disgusting allegations about against somebody I care about. But it's you just yeah, it just it is quite comical. Just mm-hmm. and the absurdity as well. Of course, it's meant to be when he was drunk as well. Yeah. I mean, if he was as drunk as that, he was drinking before he even got on the flight. You go up there with lack of oxygen, makes sure you even drunker. He supposedly had an oxygen tank as well. So yeah, he'd have been like I'd say if I mean. I went like that there to fall on his ass, you know? It's like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he, exactly. If he was half as drunk as she alleged, then he wouldn't be able to perpetrate these precision attacks no. that she's describing. And we'll get to that in a while, but... Um, throwing, throwing a shoe at her as well. Like throwing that was... a shoe, that's right. That same flight, he threw a, he threw a boot at her. Yeah. Oh, look out! Oh. That really hurt! 
another lump there, you idiot. Who throws a shoe? Honestly. Just for good measure. Oh, yeah, oh, I don't think this airplane chair has done enough damage. I know what will finish her off my boot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is completely, absolutely outrageous. Like. <laughs> and yeah, and that's similar to the MG things. Like, once you delve into it, like, once you assume that these are true, mm. they become even more ludicrous. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, you already alluded <laughs> to the timeline. <laughs> The next day, the yeah. Next day. So the so, text messages that followed, and I'll and I'll yeah. pass this part over to you. <laughs> I actually, yeah. Um, I mean, we've been kind of discussing. Okay, so to put the timeline into perspective, I believe what she is claiming happened was okay. Johnny got drunk, threw some airplane furniture around, locked himself in the bathroom, passed out. They landed in LA. She got a car, went back home. At which point, she then claims that. Johnny's assistant, his personal assistant, and her started having a conversation. And you'll see on her statements as exhibits, she says that she's got a phone forensic to say that it's all true. Stephen, Johnny's assistant, has been very adamantly denied that he ever had such a conversation with her and he would be willing to say this under oath. Now, I've been trying to look up different phone forensics to see how how would this work? I mean... Mm -hmm. Would it be just a case if she changed, um, his, say, say if I took your phone mm -hmm. and I changed your name on my, your, my name on your phone to, I don't know, Lauren, mm -hmm. and then started having a conversation back and forth with myself mm -hmm. on, on your phone and then said, oh, by the way, this is like this person, Lauren, had a conversation with me about this, this and this. So, I mean, I'd say it could be quite easy for them to debunk. Like, it's just all of a case of about establishing what phone Stephen had at that time. You know, the tel cell phone number, if it matches up. If it doesn't, then your quid's in. Um, I did find it very strange as well that in it, she had her name saved under the name Amber H. I mean, like, most people... On her own phone. Yeah, most people just say me or my number or I think iPhone. So it says, like, what, my number on okay. the top the context uh, mm. contacts sorry so it just seemed a bit strange and i also noticed like my first thought when i looked at it was like okay stephen can't spell his own surname or she can't spell his own surname <laughs> like okay it was only like an e and a u mixed up but i did think that was kind of a little bit for the seriousness of these allegations you know there's quite a, you know to have a typo like that was a bit of mm. a, a rookie mistake but um anyway so moving on so she's having this conversation with stephen he's allegedly allegedly Stephen yeah so at 4 13 a.m Stephen allegedly saying yep he's in the bathroom we'll let you know when we're en route so making it sound like they're still in the airplane Amber's gone home separately yep he's in some pain he's been sick we're on our way home so it's 20 to 8 Stephen allegedly texts her saying yep he's sound asleep um we're looking out for him so it was 20 to 8 in the morning T quarter to four four in the afternoon he said hey he's up he's much better clearer doesn't remember much we took him through what happened he's sorry very sorry wants to get better which allows us to make a follow-up on that promise and then also in the midst of the conversation amber says that she's wanting to fly back to new york that day so i mean so from boston to la then la to new york even though boston is closer to new york it seemed a bit of a convoluted timeline so that jumped out to me mm -hmm. One thing that has been pointed out about the text, allegedly from Johnny's assistants, is the time discrepancies. But given they appear to be recorded in different time zones by Amber for some reason, we can assume that that could be a possible explanation. But two messages sent at exactly the same time, on the minute, to the millisecond? Oh yeah, and also in reverse order, according to what version she submitted. So I decided to have a play around. You can see two phones. Give myself a head start on the first message, but you get the idea. It took more than a millisecond to type the seconds. You can try this at home if you have a spare iPhone lying around. I only have iPhones in my house, so this for now we must assume Stephen is an iPhone kind of guy. Or if you want to try it out with an Android, we would be interested to know your findings. As you can see, look at the clock. And I must add, if one of the world's most famous men was getting wasted and pounding the tripe out of me, I would be going for CCTV before vague so-called forensic text messages verified by experts who seemingly don't know how to spell the surname of the person I'm essentially accusing of covering up disgusting domestic abuse, among other things, but I'll say no more. Full credits uh, to go to two Twitter users, uh, one called Anaheim Yet and Under Undying Loyalty on Twitter. I'll link them in our description.